Hello everybody, Hooded Cobra Commander 788 here, and it's time for the answers to our annual Q&A. This will be the final video of 2019. This is a tradition on this channel, uh, and we had more questions than ever before, so thank you to everyone who participated. Uh, I gave uh, folks an opportunity to ask questions if they wanted to, um, and you guys did ask a lot of questions. So uh, thanks for uh, participating. I'm gonna go through these questions. I have them printed out here. Um, they I are I think they're in reverse order of when they were posted. So like the most recent questions are first. Um, and some of these include like larger comments uh, than just the questions. So I'm just gonna focus only on the questions. I have read all your comments and thank you for all of the nice things that you had to say. Uh, to try to streamline the process here, uh, if you wrote a comment that included a question, I'm not going to read the whole thing, I'm just going to focus on the question here. But I still thank you for the comment and thank you for the nice things that you said. Uh, I really appreciate that. Um, so, uh, on, also on some of these, I may paraphrase the question if the question is really long. Um, but there's a lot go, to go through here. What I should have done, but didn't do, is like if some people asked basically the same question, I should have kind of grouped those together and answered them, you know, all at the same time. But um, I didn't, so uh, some of these may be a little bit redundant, but that's okay. Um, I'm just happy to have you involved and have you care enough to even ask questions. So let's get started. Okay, Jonathan Arkendale asks a question. He actually has a, a really big comment here, uh, and so thank you for the comment. I'm going to jump right into the questions and see if I can answer them. He has, oh, ten questions here. Uh, question number one is, if you could choose one established and or popular character, whether real or fictional, to become part of the G.I. Joan universe in the vein of Sergeant Slaughter, which character would it, that be, or would you be against such a move? Well, I wouldn't be against such a move, really, um, if it's, you know, if it's a, a cool idea, um, but I've been thinking about this question since the first time I read it. I'm not sure I have a really good answer. Um, since you are, the way you frame the question, I assume you mean like a character outside of G.I. Joe. Uh, so like a, you know, Marvel Comics General Flag um, or Quinn uh, would not be an appropriate answer. Although we got uh, a Quinn figure, or there was a Quinn figure in the modern area, era. I guess there was an O-ring Quinn figure as well, uh, but not in the vintage era. Um, so I'm, I assume you mean like characters outside of G.I. Joe, and that has been a, a harder question to answer. I'm, like I would think about maybe like Rambo, since you know, the military guy from the 80s, um, so that might be cool. Or to go into science fiction, like uh, Ripley, or uh, if you want to uh, stretch it a bit, like Ghostbusters. The only character I kept thinking of that I thought would make a good Joe, uh, the one that kept popping up in my head was uh, Steve Rogers, like Captain America, like movie Captain America, where, you know, he was still, you know, had the attitude of a soldier. Uh, I, th I think that he would make a good Joe, because I, I just think he would fit well with the team. He, he's able to be a team player. Um, he understands the military lifestyle and chain of command and all that stuff. Um, I just think that he would fit. Um, but that's the uh, first one that really pops to my mind. That may not be the best answer, um, but that's the best I can think of. I'm sorry if I'm not answering that question the best. So we're off to a great start here with question number one. Uh, question number two from Jonathan is, if Larry Hama was to turn you into a character in the G.I. Joe universe, do you think he would make you a villain given the fact that you're a lawyer? Yes, probably so. Uh, question three, uh, what do you think about Larry Hama's decision to change Storm Shadow's initial allegiance in the storyline, which according to him happened because he was bothered by the fact that this fictional Japanese character was conceived by G.I. Joe as a member of Cobra? Um, I think it gave us some really great stories, so I'm happy with it. The um, storyline that led up to uh, Storm Shadow 
shifting his allegiances is, I think, one of the uh, best story arcs in the series. Um, I mean, that's the one where uh, we learn, we, we go back and look at the origin of Snake Eyes. Um, it's one in which we s learn who the assassin of the Hardmaster was. Uh, we learn a lot about Zartan and his, how he fits into all of this. All of this sort of came about because, um, uh, I should say, the transition came about because of this really interesting storyline in the G.I. Joe comic book series. So I'm for it. I, I uh, really enjoyed the stories surrounding that. Uh, question four. Do you think that a paranoid schizophrenic Zartan... Uh, would still be considered offensive. Yeah, probably so. I'm not a fan of that. Um, I have worked with a lot of people with schizophrenia, and one of the problems with, you know, making sure people get treated for uh, mental illness is the stigma surrounding them. And this idea that people with schizophrenia are villains um, are, you know, uh, that that. That, that contributes to that stigma uh, around that uh, illness. And I just, I'm not a fan of that. It's, it's a, the file card itself is a bit of pop psychology anyway and doesn't really reflect um, how the illness actually works. So not a fan. Um, question, where are we? Question five, have you ever rooted for Cobra? Uh, if not, what if America ever becomes a dystopian, oppressive state in the G.I. Joe universe? Would you root uh, for Cobra? Well, I mean, I would uh, root against uh, any uh, dystopian and oppressive states, so I guess so. But, um, I mean, obviously this channel gets its name from Cobra Commander, and I think Cobra is a great enemy for G.I. Joe. I mean, it has a lot of uh, substance to it and a lot that... Uh, uh, creates some real genuine conflict between the two. Um, and there's some really great contrasts between G.I. Joe and Cobra. So I think Cobra is a great enemy, excellent enemy for the series. Um, but as far as uh, rooting for Cobra, uh, the philosophy behind Cobra is a little muddled, but we, ha we understand some of it, uh, mostly through the work of the uh, the comic book series and Larry Hama. Um, and so that makes it hard for me to root for Cobra because the ideas behind Cobra is not something that I root for in my uh, normal everyday life. So uh, not usually. Uh, we are on question six. Lots of questions, Jonathan, but that's okay. Um, this is a Q&A after all. Uh, what faction usually won in your battle scenarios of old? Um, usually G.I. Joe won ultimately unless there was I had like an idea for um, some something the Cobra was gonna do like uh, like Cobra was gonna capture a nuclear weapon or some kind of secret weapon or Cobra was going to kidnap a, a Joe that would be used as a hostage or something like that and in those battles of course Cobra would win because it would give my GI Joe guys something to do and something to fight against so you know it could be either or but I think usually uh, GI Joe came out on top um, Question seven, do you think you will ever uh, hear from your old pal Sam again? I don't know, I don't think so. I have really actually been trying to find him. Um, I know his name, I know his full name, uh, and I know, uh, you know where he lived, you know, what, 35 years ago, but uh, I still have not been able to find his family. Um, for those that don't know, Sam was a friend of mine uh, and my brother. Uh, he lived in our neighborhood and it was the three of us that played G.I. Joe all the time. And Sam, uh, I, you know, I lost touch with him when we moved out of that neighborhood uh, and I haven't been able to find him since. I've looked on all the social media. Um, uh, if he's on there, I can't find him. Uh, which, you know, maybe he doesn't want to be found and I respect that. But I, it, I would sure be happy to talk to him again. I think that would be really cool. 
But, um, yeah, uh, I, I don't know. And it doesn't look like it. Um, unfortunately, that may be a friendship that I'm unable to rekindle. Question 8. What do you think about the G.I. Joe video games? Well, I haven't played all of the G.I. Joe video games, so I can't really comment. I have played the G.I. Joe Atari game, the Atari 2600 game. Uh, I think the game is unnecessarily difficult. I <laughs> um, actually got the game because I want to review it. I don't usually do like video game reviews on this channel, but that I thought might be fun. So maybe someday in the future, uh, you know, if I get around to it, I'll do a review of the Atari 2600 GI Joe game and uh, and let you know what I think about it. But that uh, I have played it. I've actually played it quite a bit. I wanted to really get a feel for it, and you know those Atari games are kind of simple, very simple by today's standards, but also quite challenging uh, in some levels. Um, question 9. Um, what are your thoughts about the Lunarctic uh, Empire's Manimals from 1994? Um, I do have some of the Manimals because um, they were sent to me. Uh, I want to take a closer look at them. Obviously this is far into the realm of science fiction, which is not my preference, and so that probably give you a general idea of what I think of them. Um, I am interested in them as a part of the history of G.I. Joe, as I am just in general interested in the history of G.I. Joe. So they occupy um, an interesting and unique place in the series, but, um, but as far as what I think about them indiv individually, I'd really have to look at uh, them more closely, which may, I may do in a vid video someday in the future. Um, and question 10, do you consider the Street Fighter 2 G.I. Joe figures to be the only vintage era, era collectibles that you are not interested in, or do you not consider them uh, at all to be part of the G.I. Joe vintage era? I don't consider them to be part of G.I. Joe. I consider them to be Street Fighter toys that were given a G.I. Joe label so they could be marketed more easily. Um, which, and I'm going to talk about this next year. It's something I'm actually setting up to do uh, fairly early in the year in 2020, uh, even though I don't intend to review Street Fighter toys. It is, it's a part of the history of G.I. Joe, and I do need to talk about it. I'm going to get a little bit of help uh, from somebody else to talk about that too, somebody who knows a lot more about it. But um, I've not ever been a fan of Street Fighter II uh, toys in the G.I. Joe toy line. And it doesn't have anything at all really to do with not liking Street Fighter II. Um, I don't have any problem with the game at all. And I absolutely have no problem with there being toys for the game. Um, and I don't think that the toys are like, the, like Taint G.I. Joe. I, it, um, it's not like Street Fighter hurt G.I. Joe in some way. So. That's not really the problem I have with Street Fighter, um, uh, and I, I hope that fans of Street Fighter will understand my opinion about them as you know not in any way being um, insulting or belittling of their enjoyment of Street Fighter. Um, I think, in fact, I think maybe Street Fighter fans, some of them might under might agree with. Uh, my opinion of their place in G.I. Joe, but I will not get too much into that right now because um, that is actually going to come up in a video uh, in the not-too-distant future. But uh, great questions. Thank you very much, Jonathan. And now we move to the next question, question which is Beach76. Uh, says, if you go back in time and mail away for the create a Cobra figure, what code name would you give him and what attributes would he have? Um, good question. Um, I'm not sure about the attributes. I'd have to go through like the order form and um, pick out each one, but I, I, I have thought about the code name though, um, because I've time traveled, right? Uh, I have all the knowledge that I have now, but I'm in the past and I'm ordering this figure. Um, I, I think I would call him the Hoodie Viper. I, I would have a Hoodie Viper figure. That's what he would be. Um, because I would love to have like a real personalized um, vintage era create, create a Cobra file card that had a link to this channel. I think that would be really cool. 
Um, I wouldn't call it uh, HCC or, you know, it would be weird for a Cobra soldier to be called Hooded Cobra Commander or anything. Uh, but yeah, Hoodie Viper, why not? I'll, I'll go with that. Our next question is from Glenn Robbins. Uh, Glenn says, any plans to do, uh, plans on doing any of the 12 inch versions of any of the ARAH figures? No plans immediately. Um, I may eventually uh, do like an overview of the Hall of Fame figures, the, the 90s 12 inch figures. Um, I've thought about it. I have a couple of them. I don't have it's not a focus of my collection, so I don't have a lot of them, but I've, I've seen a lot of them. Um, so that might be at some point in the future just like a uh, an overview or something like that. Um, but probably not like individual reviews of individual figures. I don't think that I would necessarily have a collection complete enough to do that. Uh, Mr. Mustachio. Uh, says, uh, I hope I made it in time. You did make it in time. Um, uh, what challenges do you imagine Roblox faced when you made the transition from Earth Cook to Space Cook? Uh, Follow up question um, Who uh, took over as Earth Cook uh, for the ter terrestrial bound Joes? Follow up to follow up Did Cobra ever have an, uh, an opposite number for the beloved rhyming chef? Uh, thanks, uh, and um, uh, thank you for your nice comment here. Um, the biggest problem with the transition to um, Space Cook is I don't believe you get to even really do a lot of cooking. Everything's in plastic bags, and, you know, they are uh, heated up by machine or, or, you know, hot water is put in them. They're reconstituted. Um, this is, I think, one of the biggest barriers to... Roadblock even joining Star Brigade is that you know the the food would be atrocious, uh, and if he is you know the cook for the Joes on Earth, and uh, he's gone, who's left? I'm not sure who takes over. They may just all be eating MREs, um, which probably doesn't make them too happy either. Uh, now I believe there was there was a Cobra chef. Uh, like a chef viper or a cook viper, um, not in the vintage era. Although there was like in the, in, um, I'm trying to remember which comic book it was. I think we saw some cobra chefs or cobra cooks in the comic book. Doug Dello says, looking forward to Joe Fest in 2020. And since I uh, have never been to any Joe convention, what is the one thing you would recommend I don't miss out on? Uh, maybe top two or three things. Well, um, you know, go to all the booths and meet all of the Joe people. That's number one. Um, that So the finest should be there. Go and see the cosplayers. Go and see Joe Colton. She's been in one of my videos. You can see her in person. Um, you know, go to... Um, uh, check out the, cus the, the uh, custom exclusive stuff. Um, I don't usually do convention exclusives, but... Um, the the, uh, the the customization jobs that they do for those exclusives are amazing. If that's something that you're into, into you definitely need to check that out. Um, there will uh, probably be panels of by you know, the creators like uh, Kirk Bazigian, Larry Hama. These guys usually do panels at. Uh, Joe Fest, Ron Rudat, where they talk about the creative process uh, in making these toys in the comic books. So don't miss those. Those are a lot of fun and very informative. Um, uh, come and see me. I'll have a booth there. Uh, just come and say hi. I'll be really happy to see you. Um, and the final... Th oh, while you're at the booth, I should have a card for everyone to sign. You know, I did one th uh, this year, still 2019. I'll do one next year. Uh, please sign my Joe Fest 2020 card. Make sure you sign it for me so I can keep that. Um, and then after the show, after the, the doors close, we usually all hang out, you know. We'll go to a bar, um, hotel bar usually, and uh, just hang out. So don't miss that too. Just join us. Um, and if, if you don't know anybody there and you don't know who to sit around or who to talk to, come and find me and we will talk. We will find a place to sit together and just enjoy talking about G.I. Joe. So 
I look forward to seeing you there. I, I really hope you are able to make it, and it should be a lot of fun. Uh, now, uh, next question is Michael Johnson. If you could go back to the 80s for one day, how would you spend it? How would you spend it? You know, yeah, how much money do I have? And can, and can I go to like Toys R Us uh, like in the 80s and just come out with an arm load of stuff? Um, that would be a, that would be great. Um, I was thinking like, I, you know, I should visit some loved ones who have passed away since then, but a lot of my loved ones are still alive from that era, so I wouldn't have too many people to go and say hello to. Uh, but, the, you know, I have, like, my, my grandparents, they passed away uh, recently, so I'd probably go and say hello to them. Now, that's a nice way to spend a little time-traveling trip uh, in the 80s, um, but before I come back, I'd, I'd like to hit Toys R Us. Uh, Adam Verwolf says, "Are you? Uh, when are you going to do a list of GI Joe toys ranked from bottom to top tier?" Um, I, that's a good question, a fair question. The tier system, um, I haven't always adhered to it all the time. Um, it's a, it's kind of imprecise. I mean, I have um, criteria for judging. Uh, but sometimes it's just too close a call for me to say exactly what tier things go into. So um, it, that's on me. Uh, I made the tier system because I wanted to have, I wanted to give some kind of final assessment on things, right? I mean, I'm looking at these, I'm reviewing them, I'm trying to look at them in a lot of detail, and as a reviewer, I should be able to form some kind of opinion on them. And so that's what the tier system was. Well, I can definitely form some kind of opinion on what I'm reviewing, but um, doesn't always neatly fit into those tiers. So I, I don't know. I'm not sure about the tier system going forward. I, um, it's, uh, sometimes I almost think that it's uh, created more problems than it solves, so I'm not sure. Um, we have uh, Jesse Cousatz. Um, who says, just for fun, what's your favorite figure from each year? Uh, and then he lists his favorite figures from each year. Uh, so my favorite figure from each year, I had to think about this a lot. I, I read through this question uh, and I gave it some thought and I'm not sure that these will be my answers for all time because my opinion does change from time to time. Uh, but let's go through 82 through 94 one year at a time. Um, 1982, Stalker will always be my favorite. 1983 is a, a tough year because there are a lot of good figures, but I, I guess I'll go with Gung Ho. I really love Gung Ho. Um, 1984, um, Storm Shadow. I really like Firefly too. Uh, 84 is another good year. It's, it's again hard to choose, but I'll go with Storm Shadow. Um, uh, 1985 would be either Snake Eyes or Footloose. I really like the military look of Footloose. I really do. Um, but it's hard to top Snake Eyes. It's a really sweet figure from 85. Uh, 1986, Leatherneck. 1987, Falcon. Uh, 1988, um, I think Rock and Roll version 2. That was the last G.I. Joe action figure I bought at retail, you know, back in that era. Um... Uh, except, no, uh, Rock and Roll was not 88. Rock and Roll was 89. Oh, I gotta pick an 88 figure. All right, there's gonna be a jump cut in this video because I had to think for a minute about who was in 88 and what's my favorite figure, and I think it's Hit and Run. I mean, that's uh, that was a figure that kind of harkened back to uh, the more military years of the line and just had a lot of cool equipment and cool camouflage. Um, but I also liked Repeater from that year, too, but I'm going to stick with Hit and Run. That's, that's what I'm going to go for for 88. 89, so then I thought, well, should Rock and Roll version 2 be my favorite figure from 89? But then I really like Backblast from 89, so I think I might go with Backblast. Uh, 1990 um, will be either Rampart or Bullhorn. I'm leaning toward uh, Rampart. Uh, 1991, Big Ben, love that figure. Uh, 1992. Uh, I really liked the version of Roadblock we got in 1992, um, but if it's uh, got to be an original character 
or a new character, uh, uh, Bulletproof, I really like Bulletproof, uh, 1993, um, Ace version 3, that may be a cop-out, but I feel like we finally got the version of Ace that I always wanted in 1993, uh, and then 1994, uh, Joe Colton, not so much because the figure is great, but because it's a good figure, um, and it just represents a lot of the history of G.I. Joe, and I like that a lot. So I'll go with the Joe Colton mail away in 1994. Bomb's Dungeon. Uh, do you think it's a shame that there is a little to no assembly in the modern vehicles as opposed to uh, what there was in the older line? Yes. One of the most fun things about getting a vintage vehicle was putting it together and you know putting those stickers on yourself and that really made it yours um that made it unique um it, even though you know all these vehicles are mass produced you know it was your hands that put that particular vehicle together um and that was great that's one of the reasons why i enjoy doing the vintage vehicle unboxing and assembly videos is because I get to do that again. Now, I only get to do it really with 1990s vehicles, but still, same idea. I get to put the thing together myself, I get to put the stickers on myself, and even if it's not perfect, it's still mine. So yeah, I think that's something that's missed a bit. Um, okay, Vagon says... Uh, okay, put together all uh, your All-Star Joe debate team. Who do you think uh, could outwit with words? Airborne is a lawyer. Um, you know, like Airborne versus Flint. Flint is an academic too. Uh, I'll bet they could have some uh, some pretty deep discussions. Airborne and Flint. That's what I'm going to go for. Air Airborne versus Flint any topic throw it out there i guarantee they could argue about it uh blackbird 26155 says what's the favorite piece in your collection that you've acquired since starting this project um well obviously uh, i like the killer whale but uh, getting the uss flag was a milestone and so that i guess i'll go with that i i have the flag it's actually right behind the camera here so i'm looking at it one of the things i regret about being so busy all the time is that i don't get to kind of play around with it very much uh, i wish i had more time to interact with the thing because it's so big and it's so there um but yeah that was a milestone getting that one so i'll go with the uss flag uh, Mark De La Cruz says, Hi, HCC788. What's your favorite G.I. Joe vehicle? Thanks. Uh, and that is the Killer Whale. The Killer Whale is still my favorite vehicle. I love the features. I like the army green color. Um, it's just, I, I had a lot of fun with it as a kid, uh, usually playing with my friend Sam's Killer Whale. Um, but uh, I, I still think that's a really fun toy. Killer Whale, thank you for asking. Uh, and then Jack Brown says, two-part question. Ooh, two-parter. Um, has your kids ever gotten into uh, slash a hold of your G.I. Joes? If so, how angry did it make you? They haven't really. Um, now, my kids, keep in mind, they are girls. Um, and they never had a lot of interest in, you know, these toys that are mostly, they mostly appeal to boys, obviously. Um, they don't exclusively appeal to boys. That's why I don't call them boys' toys, because if you look at the comments even um, in, on this Q&A, there are women who follow this toy line. Uh, they're, when they were girls, they enjoy playing with the toys and watching the cartoons and reading the comic books. So it's, it is a toy line for everyone, but it it's also no doubt that it was primarily marketed toward boys. That's that's true, but my my girls uh, never really had much interest, so they pretty much left it alone. Thanks, thanks for asking. Um, we have Mr. Bull who says, "Why wasn't there an '80s Big Lob figure?" Um, it is kind of surprising that there wasn't. I mean, he was in the animated movie, 
and uh, most of the other characters introduced in the animated movie did have figures. Not all of them. There was not a Pythona. Uh, but maybe if the movie had done better, like maybe if it had made more money, um, if it had been theatrically released, um, maybe they would have made a figure. Uh, if they had continued that series into another season with Sunbow rather than canceling it, maybe he would have gotten a figure. But uh, I guess, you know, I guess they didn't have one planned for 1987. Uh, and I guess since the movie did do, didn't make a lot of money, wasn't very successful, uh, if they had any plans, I guess they scrapped them. So, yeah, uh, and I, I'm not a fan of Big Lob. But I understand a lot of people are, and so, you know, I'm sorry you didn't get a big lob figure. I'm sorry you didn't. There was one, though. There was a convention-exclusive uh, O-ring big lob figure. So it does exist out there, but it's not from the vintage era. Uh, let's see. Cameron Johnson says, As a kid, I was drawn to the crazier, more outlandish G.I. Joe ve ve vehicles. How do you feel about the Cobra Buzzbore? Uh, the Buzzbore is... <laughs> As a toy, it's fine. As a vehicle, it doesn't make a whole lot of sense. Um, that uh, I didn't actually review the buzz bore. That was reviewed by a guest reviewer on this channel, the only guest reviewer I've ever had, so, at least so far. Um, and the guest reviewer liked it well enough. Um, I, <laughs> I just think the thing is funny. Um, if I were to review it, I probably wouldn't be as favorable but um, I mean, it's not offensive. I just think the thing is funny. It, it, uh, it's it's um, one of the crazier ideas in uh, a time period when G.I. Joe was uh, coming up with a lot of crazy ideas. Um, Dale Santiford says, um, my question, Rowdy Roddy Piper G.I. Joe figure. Um, the, I think you might have maybe hit enter before you were done with your question. Um, I believe there was a Rowdy Roddy Piper G.I. Joe figure that was an, a, a convention exclusive, but I didn't make it to that convention, and so I don't know a lot about it. But the, yeah, that, it does exist, if that's your question. Uh, and I believe they made Rowdy Roddy Piper a an Iron Grenadier. So that's kind of cool. Uh, the Killer Weezer says... Well, he has a, a comment, and thank you for your comment. Uh, I'm going to jump right to the questions. <clears throat> First question. Um, uh, okay, uh, where's a couple of places to search for Joe's since shows? I think you mean like toy shows, conventions, and stuff like that are out of my reach. Um, well, I mean, there's always eBay. There are Facebook groups that are dedicated to selling and trading G.I. Joe vintage items. So those are places to check, obviously. Um, and uh, in the last couple of years, um, a vintage toy mall has opened near where I live. And that's been great because I've actually been able to go and spend my money at a local shop and support a local business. And so uh, if in your area there is a vintage toy dealer, make sure you uh, check them out. Try to build a relationship with your local vintage toy dealer. And sometimes they can keep an eye out for uh, whatever you're looking for. Um, second question, uh, is the third edition of the Belomo Guide uh, was printed in 2018. How off are the prices from then to now? Uh, and he provides an example here. Uh, the prices, I think, were probably pretty solid for the time it was published. Um, and, I mean, it's perfectly cool to have the, the price guide in the guide. That's fine. Um, but prices are really volatile right now, um, usually trending upward at the moment. And so I am seeing prices just change dramatically in a short period of time, especially on items that are a little bit harder to find. Um, so the, no, the, amount, the prices in the price guide uh, are... For the more common stuff, it pro may not have changed all that much for like the really common stuff, but for the hard to find items, those tend to be selling for a lot more 
lately. So those prices may not be uh, accurate. Um, we go to Eagle One. Eagle One. Um, Eagle One asks, even as a kid, I understood the comic was vastly different uh, from the cartoon. By having separate continuity from comic to cartoon, do you think it hurt the franchise by not having one concise story to follow? Um, well, I've thought a lot about this, and obviously I like the comic book series more than the cartoon series. But um, I've also listened to, you know, Kirk Bazikian and, you know, Buzz Dixon and the guys who were involved in creating these things, and I, um, I kind of understand their thinking that they you know a comic book series and a, an animated series they have different qualities they have different strengths and you want to uh, let them do what they do best uh, and so what is what happens in the comic book series may not necessarily translate so well into the animated series and vice versa so I think they had to do it the way they did it and I think that's fine and I think in, it didn't necessarily hurt the G.I. Joe brand. I think it helped it in some way uh, because there are a lot of fans who came to the series from the cartoon series. Even though it's, <clears throat> it's completely different from uh, the comic book series, but you know, it kind of hit them at their, at their wavelength. And that's how they came to appreciate all of it. So Without that, you may not have reached as many people. Uh, you might, may not have, you know, found their wavelength. So, you know, a bit of diversity in the story um, is fine. I don't think you necessarily need a single unifying um, continuity, uh, as long as you know people understand, you know, that you we're going in different directions with these things. Uh, then I don't really think that it's necessarily a problem. Um, as a kid, I really wanted to see an animated version of the comic book. Like, I wanted them to take the comic book and just make a cartoon out of it. As an adult, I can kind of see that probably wouldn't have worked and probably would not have appealed to, you know, the existing fans of the animated series. Uh, but, you know, as a kid, I was thinking more, you know, just, just what I want, not what everyone else might want. Uh, but yeah, that's a fair question. That's a good question. And it makes us think a bit about the different strengths and weaknesses of different types of media. Martin D. Uh, says, If you ever, ever had another YouTube channel uh, that was not about toy collection, what would the subject be? Well, I've thought about and sort of tried to start like a movie review channel. Um, I've had a YouTube channel in the past that was focused more on law and philosophy and politics, but um, those, I just, when it comes down to it, this is what I like to do. So I just don't think I'm going to branch out. Um, I had, for, for some time, I'd really thought about and wanted to branch out, but yeah, I think, um, I've kind of changed my mind about that. I feel like this is where I belong. This is what I want to do. So I don't. I don't think I'll be uh, trying out a different YouTube ventures, at least for not for right now. Uh, Tim Bentley, hello Tim. Um, he has a question. It says, uh, "What was the worst action figure you ever reviewed?" Uh, and I'm starting a new costume. Oh, uh, Tim is a cosplayer. Uh, don't have any ideas. Uh, do you have uh, any Merry Christmas, Happy New Year? Oh, oh do, we ha do I have any ideas? And he says Merry Christmas and Happy New Year. So thank you, Tim. Um, let's see. Um, the worst figure that I reviewed, um, I still am not a fan of uh, Cobra Law, and Galobulus is... I just really dislike the Globulus figure. I understand Globulus has his defenders. And you don't have to defend him. You can just like him. It's fine. Um, I just, um, I, that figure just did not appeal to me at all. It still doesn't. I've gotten uh, some criticism for that review for not being fair to Cobra Law. Um, I, I think I, I was I, more fair than I get credit for. 
but even in the best possible light, I I don't like that figure. So I'm going to go with Golobulus. Golobulus. Defenders of Golobulus, I, I respect you. I do. And I'm not saying you should change your mind. This is just my opinion. Oh, um, you asked about ideas for a cosplay. Golobulus. There you go. Uh, get started on there. You have to make a really long tail. Um, all right. Uh, Christopher Hilt uh, says, hey, buddy. Um, and he has uh, some nice comments here. Uh, so thank you for your comments. Uh, he actually asked his wife and another question for himself. Uh, so uh, I will answer his wife's question first. She says, how does HCC 788 and his wife come up with all their funny material? Um, that's a good question. That's something that I'd like to talk about more. Um, and that's something I may talk about more at Joe Fest. Um, the, I, I don't do like skits or gags in every video, uh, only when I come up with something that I think will be funny and I think will fit. Um, but usually what happens is I'm looking at these toys, I'm writing my notes on them, and I'll get hit with a, an idea that I think is funny. Um, and, you know, I'll think about it some more, kind of think about how it would look on screen, and if it makes me laugh, then I, I, try, to, I try to do it, if I can. There are some ideas that they just they're not going to work because they would take too long to, to film, they would take too long to edit, and I just don't have that much time. So any idea that I come up with, it has to be something that we can do pretty quickly. Uh, and Susan has been a great sport. She's contributed some ideas as well. Uh, she has said that she wants to be in the videos, so I've tried to get her in the videos more. Um, but, um, but yeah, usually I, I'm just struck by you know, just something funny that occurs to me while I'm preparing the video. And if, uh, if I think about it for a minute, I don't always go with my, my first reaction or my first instinct. Got to think about it for a minute, make sure it's actually going to work, make sure that, you know, it, it's not just funny in my head. Um, but if, if it still seems funny after a couple of days, then I'll start working on it. Um, now, some things probably still are only funny in my head, but, you know, it's my show, so um, nobody can stop me from doing it. Um, so thanks uh, to uh, your wife for her question. Thank you very much. And Christopher. Uh, Christopher asks, um, uh, this is his question, after his wife's question, um, if forced into it uh, and Stalker had to choose a new code name, what do you think it should be? Uh, the, I think they should just call him Ranger. Uh, I think they actually mistakenly called him that in one of the comic book issues, but I think Ranger is, uh, you know, that, I just think it's a good name. Uh, maybe it's too general, right, because there are a lot of army rangers, but I don't think Stalker would have a problem at all uh, uh, being known by, uh, or being known as Ranger. Um, I think that would be fine. I didn't just think it's too bad that like he has a name that really wouldn't work right now. It it, it just it, it, a modern audience is not going to accept a character named Stalker, even knowing what we know. You know, if that's not what they meant when they made that character's name. But I, I know how it is. But I would go with Ranger. I like that idea. That would be fine. Okay, back after a brief break. And the next question is Zathras61, uh, who says, When I got into collecting, I purchased my favorite figures. Later on, I found out it was called Army Building. Uh, what are your thoughts of army building, and what figures and or vehicles would you like to army build? By the way, um, for figures, it's Falcon, Ripcord, and Leatherneck. Okay, cool. Um, uh, army building. Most of the time people army build like Cobra Troopers and that makes total sense to me because they were kind of designed to be an army, uh, right? They were sort of undifferentiated. They, you know, you, most of them didn't have, show their features so they could just, you could get a bunch of them and just pretend that they're different guys. You're supposed to have an army of them rather than just one. Now as a kid, for each trooper I really only had one. But as an adult, um, I have 
uh, army built a little bit. Uh, not uh, not in intentionally, except for like my uh, my cobra eels. Uh, those I have intentionally picked up a few of, uh, just because I like the eels. Um, and because I have to collect um, variations and you know get like incomplete figures and put in order to assemble a complete figure, uh, I have ended up with multiples of certain figures like the Cobra Bat and the Crimson Guard. I didn't intentionally army build those, but since hey, since I ended up with more than one of them anyway, I might as well hang on to them, and I have a small army of them, so that's cool. There are some folks that just really go crazy with the army building, and you know, that's their preference, that's fine. Um, uh, it does affect the price of those figures a bit. Um, figures that are normally army built, like the various Cobra Troopers, the Vipers, uh, tend to run a bit high because, uh, you know, the, a whole bunch of them end up in a few collections, so there just aren't as many of them around. But keep in mind that these toys were mass produced. You know, there are many, many thousands of them out there, and even though army building has affected the price some, you can still find them out there. They are still out there. You can still get them. You may have to pay a little bit more for them, but. Um, but it's fine. I, I don't really think army building has had uh, a big negative impact on collecting. Maybe, uh, maybe other than like just bumping up the prices of some of those figures. But um, yeah, if you want to army build, I, I'd say you know go for it. Um, uh, if you are collecting on a budget, that can break your budget pretty uh, easily. But um, it is kind of cool, though, to see an army of figures on a shelf. Um, kind of how you probably always wanted to do it when you were a kid, but maybe couldn't afford to. As an adult collector, maybe you can get all those figures and kind of see the whole army in front of you. That's, uh, that's not bad. Uh, Eric Amen. Hello, uh, Eric. Uh, has some nice comments. Thank you very much for your comments, Eric. Um, he says, uh, you have defined the scope of your G.I. Joe collecting as essentially comprising 82 to 94 U.S. released ARH line, uh, but how do you decide the order in which you select your items for review? That's a really good question. Uh, do you have a deliberate approach or strategy? Do you uh, have particular figures or vehicles in mind for review of particular events, milestones, um, and such? Uh, really good question. Uh, I do have a sort of an informal system. Uh, I didn't always, but I'm developing it a bit more uh, to try to add a bit more variety to the reviews. Um, and so one thing I do is I try not to review more than one version of a figure in the same year. Um, so like I reviewed one version of Cobra Commander this year and I actually had another version of Cobra Commander on the schedule. But I struck that because, you know, I, I want to spread them out. You know, I, I want to have more versions of Cobra Commander to review in subsequent years. Uh, same with Snake Eyes. Um, it was very tempting to review two versions of Snake Eyes in the same year, but I got to spread that out a bit. Um, and I look at, like, uh, there will probably always be more Joes than Cobras, but I try not to have like a whole bunch of them in a row, like a whole bunch of Cobras in a row, and a whole bunch of Joes in a row, so they, they got to mix up a little bit. Um, also, the ratio of vehicles to figures has been a little bit off. I need to kind of get a better handle on that. Um, vehicles are always more difficult to review. There's just more to look at, right? It's just more to do. It's more work. Um, also, I mean, there are more figures than vehicles to review, so there will always be more figure reviews than vehicles. Um, what I used to do is um, I would review one vehicle per month. Like the first review of the month would be a vehicle, everything else would be a figure. Uh, and that worked out well enough for a while, but at, over time I just found that to be a bit too rigid. So now I just kind of look at the whole schedule and I, you know, look at. I try to space out the vehicle reviews uh, by a reasonable amount. I, I don't want to go like 
a long time without reviewing a vehicle, but I've, I have to have some space in there because I've got a lot more figures I need to review. Um, yeah, and I've done like theme months in the past, like, uh, you know, Tiger Force month or whatever, but um, the theme months end up being a little bit of a problem because uh, if a viewer doesn't like that theme, then a viewer may tune out for an entire month. Um, and I don't want to miss people for an entire month. So uh, the theme months, not sure if I'm going to do a whole lot more of those. Um, but um, yeah, the uh, I've started doing themes for the year, like 2019 was the year of the rarity. So I needed to mix uh, in some fairly rare items throughout the year. Uh, I've already decided on what next year's theme is going to be and this one's going to be kind of rough folks it's going to be it's not going to be an easy one so then now i have themes that go th for the whole year but i can't only do uh that stuff i can't only do rare reviews i gotta mix in you know some common things so uh yeah um that's a long answer for a short question but the 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 most concise answer is I try to spread it out. I try to diversify it. I try to not have too much of the same kind of thing too close together. That's the short answer. All right, Tim Roper says, uh, any re regrets reviewing version one, version two, Sarge together? Any chance you will revisit these two separately to slaughterize it? Uh, yeah, a little bit. I mean, uh, the review itself is fine, um, but, like uh, any of those older reviews, uh, they may not be redone, but they always have the potential of being redone because I feel like I could do better now. Um, so maybe is the answer. Uh, that's a definite maybe. Um, yeah. Um, Thomas P says, watching your videos, it's clear uh, you have a rather large collection of GI Joes, which reminds me, uh, which leads me to the question, how do you keep track of all the items in your collection? Have you ever unintentionally acquired two of the same figure not knowing you had it? Um, yeah, I think that's happened uh, with figures and file cards. I like, I forgot I had the file card and I got another one. Um, I had tried to keep track of my collection in several ways. I had a list, um, I had a, um, a spreadsheet uh, and none of that worked very well because I couldn't keep up with it. Um, I I really like to have stuff coming in all the time. It, it, um, I, I want to keep getting stuff. I love collecting. Uh, I love getting G.I. Joe. I love having new stuff come in and um, sometimes, not always, but sometimes it comes in so quickly that I can't keep my list up. So I haven't kept a list for the last couple of years. And so um, I, it's pretty much in my head. Um, I have things somewhat organized. So if I'm thinking of getting something, I can go and check and make sure I don't already have it. Um, because that is kind of a pain to double up on something, spend the money on something I already have when I could have gotten something new. Um, so yeah, it's not the best way to organize, uh, but that's my life right now. Someday I keep thinking when my life calms down a bit, uh, I will be able to organize more and better than I have, uh, in the past, but uh, life hasn't calmed down that, w that, that much. So, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm not as organized as I probably should be. Um, Next question is from John Friday. John Friday says, if you were tasked to reboot the live action movie franchise, what Joe's Cobras would you feature? Um, what would your dream casting for those roles? And uh, would the story, what, what would the story roughly be about? Um, uh, thanks and Merry Christmas uh, to you as well. Um, I would like to take it back to the basics and I like take it back to the original team. Although I understand it probably would be impossible to market a GI Joe anything that didn't have Duke, 
Um, they didn't have Destro, you know, the Baroness, whatever. Um, so I understand that there are core characters that the audience wants to see that were not part of that original 1982 team. So, yeah, you'd probably have Duke in there, um, but I'd like to see... Uh, I'd like to see it started with a smaller team uh, where you can focus on fewer characters and um, make it a little bit more humble beginnings rather than like they have the biggest and best of everything. Uh, they have a giant <laughs> uh, underground headquarters that is impossibly large um, like in, in Rise of Cobra. Um, uh, so, yeah, I'd, I'd like to maybe see it come back to basics a little bit. Uh, they tried to do that, I think, a little bit in um, in uh, uh, Retaliation. So they tried to kind of pare it down to a smaller group, and they did try to take it back to basics. And even though that's not a perfect movie, that is something that I did kind of like about it, is that it didn't have a, a zillion people on the team. You had some specific limited number of characters to focus on and they could be developed a little bit more uh, so that's what I do with it I, I think I would um, I try I take it back to basics and I would establish that conflict between GI Joe and Cobra just really focus on setting that up really well uh, I have no idea what actors I would choose I'll have to skip that part of the question I, I, I don't really know um, but uh, I would, I'd like to see, I'd like to see maybe a simpler, uh, more focused GI Joe that you can build on. You you can build on that, right? You can, uh, you can then have like the Dreadnoughts over here, and you can have the ninjas over here, and you can have the, all these things interacting. But uh, I feel like you got to lay the foundation for that first. So that's what I would do if I were to reboot the live action movie. Okay, Jason Karist um, has some comments, and uh, uh, th thank you for your comment. I'm going to skip directly to the question. Uh, the question is, um, oh, okay, I'm sorry. Uh, the, the comment is the question, so I have to kind of go through the whole thing. Um, question is, The Ultimate Guide to G.I. Joe, uh, Volume 1, by Mark Velomo, forward for Series uh, 4, 1985. Mm -hmm. Uh, reads, uh, paraphrasing, uh, basically this is about Larry Hama wanting the Footloose action figure to be a new version of Grunt. Um, and his question is, um, uh, imagine what could ha have happened here to the Joeverse. Flash could have been the 1985 airtight, as he was experienced with chemical, biological, radiological weapons. Stalker might have been in the new Desert Trooper. Uh, Clutch uh, could have uh, driven the Awe Striker. Implications are astounding, uh, but not, but was not in the cards. So. Uh, the question is, uh, if you agree, disagree, partially agree, see some fine points, but not others. Uh, what's your take? Uh, P.S. Have you mentioned yet uh, that your end credits uh, music uh, this season sounds a bit like uh, the Lumineers, a great band? No, I don't think anybody's mentioned that, but thank you. Okay, so if I can paraphrase his question, um, it's about uh, could we have had a new versions of the original characters uh, outfitted for new environments and with new equi equipment rather than introducing whole new characters that basically had the same specialty. Um, and I get your point and I think that it is definitely uh, a good idea for some characters. Um, what, the first thing that pops into my mind is, like, downtown from, what, 1989? I don't think there's any reason why that figure could not have been short fuse. I mean, it's the, it's the same. Um, colors could have been better, but still. Um, yeah, there are some instances where I think that's a, that would have been a, a great idea. Uh, in other instances, um, I'm kind of glad we got to 
diversify a little bit. I'm glad we got to have a few new characters. I think you need new characters uh, each year to just kind of keep the brand refreshed and to uh, create more uh, character types, you know, more uh, different types of interactions that you have, have different types of people join the team. Um, also, if you have new characters, you can create a squad of guys uh, for a particular environment. Like, I think it would be great to have like a, 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 a desert uh, equipped stalker, but I would still want Dusty, right? Um, and, you know, Tan Clutch and Tan Grunt. Um, all these guys, sometimes they may seem redundant, but you know, if you want to build a squad out of these guys and all of these guys go on a mission together, I think that's kind of cool too. Um, but yeah, sometimes there there were some figures that came out that were there were, was no reason why that that had to be a new character. Uh, it could have easily been uh, an updated uh, older character and might have been better for it. So really interesting question that takes my mind in a direction that I hadn't uh, hadn't really thought a lot about. Uh, David Landon Cole, my old friend uh, Landon, uh, says, what's your favorite Sonic fighter? Uh, will a Toy Master ever be stopped? Yes, Landon is the Toy Master. Um, bizarre accent and the research lab has made each G.I. Joe release year its own sub-team. Um, so okay, all right. So wow, oh, its own sub team and all previous alliances have been forgotten. Which year will win the ultimate battle um, uh, of ultimate destiny? Okay, I stuttered a lot while I was reading that question. I'm sorry. So Landon has uh, basically a two-part question. First, what's your favorite Sonic warrior? I think you mean like the Sonic fighters. Um, and uh, I mean, do do the supersonic fighters count? Uh, you know, do the do the talking battle commanders count as well? Um, as far as the sonic fighters, um, I really liked that version, the sonic fighters version of Law. I just think it's a nice figure, and it's like the colors are, are nicely updated from the original, even though the mold is. They just reused the version one mold. It's really think it's a nice looking figure, um, but okay. So the next question is: uh, Each year of release is its own sub team, and they're gonna fight it out. They're gonna fight it out. Oh, I know who wins, and you're not gonna like it. Uh, I. There's, there can be only one answer, and it's unfortunately, it's because of sheer numbers alone. If each year of G.I. Joe is a, its own sub-team and they have to fight all of the other years as sub-teams, then 1993 has to win because it has everyone outnumbered. Um, it's totally unfair, but just with the sheer volume of stuff, that was released in 1993, I just think all of the other years would be overwhelmed. Human wave, just rolling right through there. 93, there you, it's not a very satisfying answer, I know. Um, so, uh, Ian Sharman says, uh, in what form would you like to see Hasbro bring back G.I. Joe? As reissues, as updated versions of existing characters, as all new characters, and in which scale, 3.75 inch or 6 inch collector's line? I personally like to see a 6 inch line like Star Wars Black Series or Power Rangers Lightning Collection. Um, well, I don't collect modern, so I guess it doesn't matter to me what scale they do, as long as it's something that people will buy and that will be popular. Um, but I, I know that it's not going to happen, but I kind of wish G.I. Joe would be, uh, revamped in a way that is totally new, uh, not like another iteration of Real American Hero, um, because I, I just think that the next generation of fans deserves its own G.I. Joe, like what we had. We did not have the 60s and 70s G.I. Joe. It was new, and it was for us. Uh, and what we had probably didn't appeal very much at all to fans of G.I. Joe in the 60s and 70s. But, you know, it was focused on what we wanted at the time, and I feel like 
the kids that would be buying the stuff today deserve the same thing. I say that, but I know that's not going to happen. Uh, even when they tried to give us something new, like Sigma 6, wasn't really new. Um, it still, you know, had real American hero characters in it. Um, it was, you know, it was just another, it was, it was like a, a different kind of version of real American hero. They're not going to do what I want them to do. And I accept that. I understand that. That's something that I want, but I also understand that that's not something that's going to happen, so I'm not going to get too upset about that. So as far as what's within the range of actual possibility, um, there's been talk about like a G.I. Joe Evergreen line, maybe. I'll, I'll believe that when I see a bit more of it. Um, there will definitely be figures for the Snake Eyes movie. That could be a launching point to, for more things. Um, I think that's the direction it'll go. Uh, I think it will be another iteration of Real American Hero. It'll be a, a, a revamped, you know, a rebooted version of that um, with a, a lot of characters that we're familiar with, uh, but just in different forms. Um, and I think that's fine as long as they do it well and as long as uh, the next generation of fans uh, likes it. A uh, good question. Um, Game Master's Hobby says, Best G.I. Joe Holiday Memory. Um, I, I got the 1983 Headquarters Command Center, I think, in 1983. I, be I believe that was that Christmas. Um, and that was, that's probably the best one. I mean, the Headquarters. What, at the time, you couldn't get any better than that. That was that was the ultimate. So uh, that's probably the best memory that that uh, I can recall right now. Nathan Webb, um, hi HCC. Hello. I'd like to draw one of your title pages. Is that possible? Um, it is. If you want to, uh, send me a an email at the email address that uh, I'll put it in the the the. A description of this video if you want to send me an email. Um, one thing that's important to keep in mind about uh, being a guest artist for you know doing title cards on the show is I, uh, I, I the, the show is not a money maker I can't pay artists to do that and because I understand that a lot of artists get a lot of requests to work for free I don't ask people to do that I, I Never have, never will ask an artist to work for free. Um, if you want to volunteer your work, uh, I would be okay with that. Reluctantly, and I think I've said this to everyone that, that has volunteered work for me, is that I, your work is valuable. Your worth, work is worth something. And so uh, if you are uh, donating that, uh, it makes me appreciate it that much more, but you should not donate it because uh, you think that I'm asking for it or that I need it. Um, I, I, I want all artists to understand that uh, their work their work is worth something. Um, so if you, under those circumstances, if you would like to donate some artwork for a title card, definitely send me an email. But I'll, I'll never ask you to do something without being paid for it. Um, and uh, I, I appreciate uh, the artistic talent of the people that have, uh, have helped out with this channel. Uh, and that means a lot to me because, because I do value your work so much. Uh, so thank you. It's um, a surprise question. Uh, thank you. Uh, Tony Jackson says, was there a real-world military vehicle you wanted to see in G.I. Joe style that Hasbro not, never got around to? Um, I think I would have liked to see a G.I. Joe... Well, okay, I have two answers. As a kid, I would have liked to have seen a G.I. Joe uh, version of the Russian Hind helicopter. That was in a bunch of movies, and I just thought that would be really cool. Um, the other answer would be the... Um, C-130 air, air, um, 
airplane, the uh, cargo plane, which they never released, but there was a version released that was not G.I. Joe. I do have it. It's pretty cool. Um, but even looking at the one that uh, was eventually released, uh, you can kind of see how Hasbro would never have done that. If Hasbro had done it, it would have been ridiculously expensive. And it's a big toy, too. Um, but, uh, yeah, I, I think I always wanted a C-130 and or a Hind helicopter. I think those would have been really cool additions uh, for G.I. Joe vehicles. And Alex and Megan... Uh, Oh, wait. Yeah, here we go. Alex and Megan uh, say, um, I had a question um, about a chrome snake eyes I saw. Oh, okay, this is not a question. Uh, just, uh, I guess he already got his question answered. Uh, but he likes the idea of the Q&A. So uh, thank you very much. Uh, very much appreciated. We move on to Skywarp6599, who says, My first question is, what's your most valuable G.I. Joe action figure or vehicle uh, two, when did you start getting back into collecting G.I. Joe figures? I uh, recently started myself, so I was just kind of wondering. Um, hope uh, you answer these questions. Have a great new year. Have a great new year to you as well. Uh, to answer your first question, um, the Goldhead Steel Brigade is probably the most valuable piece in the collection right now. Um, I do also have the Create a Cobra, which is you know, also a pretty rare piece. Um, the flag is not necessarily rare, but it's big and it can be uh, pricey. I don't like to go too much into how much I paid for stuff because I don't want people to use that as a yardstick for how much they should pay for it. That, that's not the purpose of this channel, uh, but I think it's fair enough to say that those things uh, are at the top of the list for how much I had to shell out to, to get them. Um, oh, your second question was, um, when did I get started uh, back into collecting? Um, it was around 2014, so really I've not been doing it that long compared to a lot of collectors who have been doing it for decades. Um, but uh, when I got in back into it, I got back into it with a lot of energy and passion. Uh, so I really dived into it and I started getting stuff pretty quickly. Um, my original plan was to just get the 1982 figures. I thought that would be pretty cool to have the 82 figures, just the 82 figures, lined up on a shelf, one shelf. I thought that would be pretty awesome. Uh, then I got the His Tank, and the His Tank is not from 1982, it's from 1983. So that just threw that plan out the window and <laughs> then I had to eventually decide okay where when will I stop and I've just I've decided that I will stop with the vintage run 82 to 94 that's the scope of my collection but yeah I haven't been doing it I guess very long compared to a lot of other people um, so you know probably not even qualified to uh, do these reviews you should probably find uh, somebody more experienced. Um, Brian Fitzgerald says, what in particular reignited your passion for G.I. Joe? That follows perfectly from the last question. Um, and it was Form BX257, the uh, YouTube content creator, Kevin. Um, I, it was a, I've told the story before, I won't go too much into it again. Uh, it's, um, I was a, in a pretty rough, part of my life and I found Kevin's videos and it reminded me of all the fun I had with G.I. Joe and that kind of got me into uh, collecting so that's I give credit to Form BX257 for that. Troy Smith what was your favorite video you produced this year? A lot of really great ones with a lot of uh, great guests um, I lo love working with people um, and yeah, I loved doing Cobra Convergence and working with Timmer and all of that. Um, it's hard to pick a favorite, but I think it might be the Joe Colton video um, because I have so much respect for Joe and for Mike and for uh, What's on Joe Mind and all they have done for the G.I. Joe uh, fan community. 
um, and I, how much I've been a fan of theirs for such a long time, and for them to come on my show is a really big deal. So I'm gonna, I, if I have to, I've, if point a gun to my head and I have to pick one, I think that's the one I will pick, the Joe Colton review. The Batman, it's the Batman. Uh, Batman asks, um, if you could create a story with any of your vintage figures, what would the story be called and be about? What Joes and Cobras would you want involved? Uh, any vehicles you'd include? Well, um, the first video that I ever did on this channel before I even did reviews was an attempt at a an action figure kind of story thing, kind of a like a little mini movie. Um, and it was going to start with the origin of both Cobra and G.I. Joe and kind of follow their development, you know, all the way up through, you know, their their rise. Um, and I, that's something that still interests me. I, I still think about, you know, what kind of uh, actions, what kind of decisions, what kind of thought processes would produce these two teams. And uh, that's something that I would like to explore, probably something along those lines. And as far as who would be involved, well, you know, uh, your original 1982 team, uh, Cobra Commander, Destro, you know, your Cobra Troopers, all those guys. You gotta start. You gotta start at the beginning. Um, Jesse Cousats says, uh, do you take inventory of your collection uh, so you know exactly what you need and would you make that information available to your fans so they don't end up, um, you don't end up with so many multiples um, from the generous donations? That's a fair point. More importantly, how do you keep track of the reviews that you do? Great to see a checklist so we can easily find what was a review and what has yet to come. Also, do you know how many reviews you feel inclined to re-review? I'm personally fine with your old reviews, but curious if, uh, what we can expect. Really good questions. Multiple questions in there. I already kind of answered that I'm not doing a very good job of keeping track of my collection, and that is totally on me. Um, surprisingly, I don't get a lot of multiples uh, in the donations, which is cool. Um, uh, so, and by the way, for those who donate, thank you for doing that. I, I don't ask people to do that, but it's very nice and people have really helped out a lot. Um, but, um, but yeah, I don't have a good system right now. I know I really need to get a better system, but right now it's just, it's all of my effort and all of my time just to, um, get the reviews done. <laughs> so... It's, I'll have to have a bit of space and time to work on that before I can really uh, do it better. Um, but uh, as far as a list of the reviews, I'm trying to keep the website, the hcc788.com website updated. So uh, for the most of them, unless there might have been a couple that I missed, uh, but you should be able to go there and look by year and look by item and see uh, if it's if it's, I've done a review, it should be up there. Um, need to update a couple of them, but for the most part, it should be up there. So yeah, if you want to see what hasn't been reviewed, if it, the review's not there, I probably haven't done it. Um, but uh, as far as which ones I might re-review, um, like any of those really old ones could be re-reviewed. I don't... The earliest videos I'm not super satisfied with. I'm glad that you like them and, and some other folks like them too. Um, sometimes I might just let them stand, uh, but uh, there are some that I feel like I reviewed too early in this channel's life. Like I really hadn't developed my style enough. I hadn't, you know, I, I needed to mature a bit before I reviewed some of these uh, really important characters like like Duke. I think I reviewed Duke way too early. I think I reviewed Snake Eyes way too early. I, I did all three of the original Dreadnoughts and so that's done. But I want to look at the original Dreadnoughts again. I think I, sh I could do a little better now. So yeah, all of those like before say 19... Uh, 19... before 2016-ish uh, all of those could be eligible uh, to be re-reviewed. Uh, good questions. Thank you, Jesse. 
Uh, next question from Brandon Knight. Um, and he asks, uh, would I ever review the Leonard Core, Remco US figures, and A-Team figures? Uh, compare them to Hasbro G.I. Joe figures. Uh, which plastic is better and why? Also, you, would you welcome these toy lines into the Joe family? Um, I don't know if I will like review like individual uh, toys, but I kind of like to do, as with the Hall of Fame figures, I kind of like to do like an overview uh, and kind of give a more general idea of what they are. And yeah, do a compare and contrast with the G.I. Joe figures to see you know, how did they measure up. I think that would be really interesting. I'd really like to do that someday. Uh, it's kind of, it's on my list of things to do. Uh, I haven't gotten around to it yet. Um, but as far as welcoming them, in, welcoming, welcoming them into the G.I. Joe family, you know, I, as a kid, I definitely did. I mean, as a kid, I needed more guys, right? Um, G.I. Joe provided a lot, but I would need, like, more enemy characters. I would need some civilian characters. I would need, like, some, even, like, some good guys that aren't necessarily Joes. I would need all these guys and the Leonard Core uh, figures, the... Um, Remco figures, they um, they provided that uh, just these missing pieces that I wanted for my playtime. And then later, when I started customizing, they provided a lot of parts when we were creating our own uh, characters. So uh, yeah, I, I welcomed them uh, at the time, and I'm still pretty fond of them now. Uh, Dirt McGirt, great name. Uh, he says. Um, uh, I know you like more realistic G.I. Joe, uh, re I'm sorry, more realistic military style figures. Uh, enjoy the look at your uh, childhood box of kit bash parts. That is, uh, I enjoyed that as well. It was a nice trip down memory lane. Uh, if you could cherry pick through all the vintage parts, uh, figures, four parts, from boots to helmets, uh, all the guns and accessories, what parts and features uh, from the vintage line, would you assemble to make the most perfect BA military style? Uh, military style Joe. Uh, oh, fun fact when I got a little older as a child, we used to uh, scavenge all the good camel uniform parts and cool guns and equipment to make uh, a hardcore team and assemble the leftovers uh, into civilians or the dud team of dudes with bright jerseys and purple pants. And goofy guns. I, uh, I, we did the same thing basically when we were talking. I was talking about customizing, and the last year or so of collecting GI Joe as a kid, we were doing a lot of customizing. This is the time period when we were getting a lot of purple figures. Um, so we did the same thing. We would get figures that had, you know, camouflage, and we would put those parts together. Uh, so, yeah, we it did the same thing. I mean, exactly the same thing. Um, so, but as far as building a figure, I'm not sure I can answer that in this context because I'd really, that's, that take a lot of, you know, looking at parts, looking what is compatible, looking at what I would have to, uh, you know, paint. Um, so, I don't, I'm not sure, and I apologize, I don't think I can answer that question adequately. Uh, but I do uh, have a lot of fond memories of doing what you did and kind of, you know, putting together our own guys. Uh, Albert Moe says, uh, has there been a time in acquiring figures of vehicles that you overpaid? If so, which one was it? Oh, yeah, I'm sure there was. I think I paid too much for my um, uh, Listen and Fun Tripwire. Um because I really, I just wanted to review it. I just wanted to. Um, and I didn't want to wait around for a better deal. I just wanted the figure. So uh, I probably overpaid for that one. I, again, I won't talk about like how much I paid because I don't want that, I, this, I don't want this to become a price guide. Um, but there have probably been a few times, uh, usually when um, something is on the schedule to review and I just really have to get it and I don't have time to wait for a better deal, there is something I do when I create the schedule for the year. Uh, I will always intentionally put certain items on the schedule that I don't have complete yet because it makes me have to get it because uh, there are some things that 
some gaps in the collection that I just haven't been very motivated to fill. But if I put it on the schedule, then I have to fill that gap. It kind of pushes me forward to, to completing certain things because I know that I have to if I'm going to keep the schedule and review it on time. Um, so, yeah, I, on some of those occasions I may have overpaid a little bit, but uh, I, the one that comes to mind is that Listen and Fun Tripwire. Forge Masajewski says, um, what do you think of the modern G.I. Joe figures that have been released, 25th, 30th, etc., etc.? What is your opinion on Hasbro dropping G.I. Joe from its toy selection? Is there a place for military toys uh, toys in the modern day? Um, uh, as far as the modern figures, it's not really my bag. I understand why a lot of people like them. Uh, they look really nice. They're well sculpted. Lots of articulation. Lots of pieces. Lots of weapons and stuff when I handle them I they to me they don't feel like toys um, they look and feel like an adult collectible in fact I think on the uh, like the figure subscription service uh, figures from the collectors club they actually say adult collectible on them um, and so uh, they have a different appeal than the vintage figures. The vintage figures, for whatever flaws they have, are definitely toys that were intended to be played with by small people. So uh, it's just different. Um, and it's just not my thing. I'm just not a modern collector. I know a lot of people dig the modern stuff, and that's great. I'm just, uh, I do have some, um, and I, some of them have been donated to me, and actually, that's very, very helpful. Because I'm, since I'm not a modern collector, that's the only way I really have a chance to, to really look at them and to uh, understand them and get to, to know them is uh, by very generous people uh, just uh, donating some of them. Uh, so that's been great. And I have enjoyed kind of looking at what they have done with G.I. Joe in recent years. Um, and. The modern figures definitely have a very strong appeal. They look great, um, but it's not vintage, and I still focus on vintage. Uh, uh, ask, what's your opinion of Hasbro do dropping the G.I. Joe line from its toy selection? Well, uh, that's supposed to change next year with um, the Snake Eyes movie, so G.I. Joe will be back in. Uh, and is there a place for military toys in the modern day? Uh, sure. I mean... Um, a lot of uh, even like Marvel stuff, um, I mean, it's superheroes, but a lot of it even still has like a military or pseudo military style to it. Um, uh, there are some Fortnite figures that are a lot like G.I. Joe. And, and so, yeah, sure, sure. Um, what I think people conflate with this idea that of military toys versus like the, an overall attitude toward, you know, militarism I guess um, people buy military toys uh, they may not necessarily buy uh, the uh, a certain attitude toward war um, and, and I'm not sure that was that's very much different from even how it was uh, in the 80s and 90s even back then people were uh, not looking all that uh, well on excessively you know belligerent attitude toward war in general and toys that reflected that so that's not new you know that's something that's been around for a while uh, but with the proper attitude with the proper mindset then uh, I mean, military toys are around right now and they're being purchased right now so yeah military toys can make it. Um, G.I. Joe ha just has to find how it fits in that. Um, uh, but good questions, and that, uh, I, I love these questions that give us something to think about. This is going to be a really long video. I was hoping to make it shorter and streamline the process, but I've not done that at all. So um, sorry, folks. Thanks for being patient. Uh, James Schultz III says, uh, hello, hoodies 788 
Um, how many 1982, 1994 figures do you own and how many more to go? Great channel. Thank you very much. Uh, I have no idea how many I have. I have never counted them. Even when the collection was smaller, I didn't count them. Um, and as far as how many I have to go, I'm going to guess we're down to like a, a third, like our last third of the vintage era. Now the problem is a lot of that last third of the collection that I still have to get is like really hard to find stuff, you know, or, or really big stuff that I'm running out of room for. Um, so that last one third of the way is maybe the most uh, maybe the hardest, maybe the most difficult to, to, to do. So, uh, yeah, I think we're most of the way there. But, yeah, that, that doesn't mean this last part is going to be easy. Um, but, I, you know, um, I don't count the figures because uh, the size of the collection has never been the most important thing to me. Uh, I'm trying to uh, put the collection together so that I can share each of these things with everyone. And so that's really the purpose, not just to get like a bunch of stuff, but there's a purpose to getting this stuff. And that's been, always been more important to me than how much stuff it is. Uh, but uh, good question. Thank you, James. Ryan Sweeney uh, says... Um, uh, have you met many folks uh, that you have mentioned on your channel uh, from Sergeant Slaughter to Larry Hama? Uh, is there any person out there you would want to meet? Uh, or is there someone uh, who you would like to interview as part um, of Cobra Convergence 2020? Really good questions. I have met Larry Hama. Um, I've met Sergeant Slaughter. I met Ron Rudat and uh, Kirk Bozigian. All of the names you probably know from me mentioning them, uh, who were very instrumental in creating G.I. Joe uh, back in the 80s and the 90s. Um, so I've met a lot of those guys, great guys, great experience. Um, as far as someone I'd like to meet, I would really like to meet Air Devon. That is someone I'd really love to talk to. Um, I just want to uh, listen to her talk about collecting and also about, you know, kind of turning that corner and letting go of a lot of her collection. I have a, a lot of respect for Air Devon. Um, and she was kind of getting out of G.I. Joe collecting at almost the same time I was getting in. So I'm not sure I'll ever have a chance to meet her and talk with her. But that is someone that I would love to be able to meet and just have a conversation with. Uh, as far as who I'd like to interview for Cobra Convergence, I would love to interview Larry Hama, but I don't think he does that anymore. He doesn't really do that kind of interview anymore. I kind of understand why, but it's too bad because I think that uh, that would be a great uh, addition to Cobra Convergence. Uh, Alejandro Moreno says, what is your top uh, 10 most important G.I. Joe and Cobra figures? Um, most important, that's an interesting way you put that. That's not favorite, but most important. So for most important, you have to go with the characters that, in, that, um, uh, that impacted the storyline the most. Uh, and so I've thought about that. Um, and the names I came up with were, well, Stalker, Snake Eyes, Storm Shadow. You know, the three that originated in... Vietnam as war buddies, uh, Scarlet, Duke, Cobra Commander, uh, Destro, the Baroness, Zartan, and um, oh, who's number 10? That's only nine. Uh, okay, I'm blanking on number 10, but you get the idea. These are the ones that have the most impact on the story. Roadblock. Roadblock. Cause it's, just because I like Roadblock. Um, SEO Toy Reviews, what do you think are the best and worst vehicle name acronyms? I don't know if I can pick the best one, uh, unless it's just ironic. Um, never been a great fan of the excessive use of acronyms. Like, um, uh, now I wrote down the acronym for the Demon Tank, which is dual, L um, sorry, Dual Elevating Multi-Ordinance Neutralizer. Or the Havoc, which is 
heavy articulated vehicle ordinance carrier. Those words, those words don't all go together. Uh, but um, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> and whale, the for the killer whale, the W H L A L E. That was that one's pretty silly. Um, so yeah, I just I don't know if I can pick best and worst, but just in general, I I think. Um, I just, I'm not a fan of the acronyms just in general. And SEO Tour Reviews has an excellent YouTube channel uh, of his own, so make sure you check out SEO Toy Review. Uh, Pensive Melancholy says, uh, collecting Joe's modern or vintage uh, is an expensive hobby. Very true. Uh, how much longer do you think you will continue to collect? How many more Joes do you need to finish your collection? I think this sort of uh, goes back to what I said. I think I'm down to about a third of the vintage run that I still need to get. Um, but it's a difficult third to get. So uh, just however long that takes, and I have no idea. But that's, uh, that, that, that's what I'm estimating, is I've still got about a third of the way to go. Uh, Robert Olson. Uh, thanks for all you do. Thank you very much. Uh, I'm glad you're enjoying the channel. Uh, question is, how much of your collection do you keep on display versus uh, what you might keep in storage? Really good question. Um, I have some storage bins for figures uh, that are separated by year. I try to keep everything up through about 1986 on display somewhere, and my display is not super organized right now, but um, everything uh, up through 86 should be out and not stored. Um, everything after 1986, it just depends on what I have room for. And if I don't have room for something, then I'm uh, just, I'm carefully, um, uh, you know, keeping it uh, stored. I've got it carefully packed, you know, so it doesn't break. And so all the pieces stay together. And those I have organized by year. Uh, that's for the figures. The vehicles are a bit more difficult to organize. Most of the vehicles are on display in some way, shape, or form. There are some that I've had to put in storage bins, uh, but hopefully they don't have to live there forever because I really like displaying the vehicles and I hate to have them stored away. But space is an issue. Space is an issue. If I had infinite space, then it wouldn't, it wouldn't be an issue. Uh, but yeah, I try to keep everything at least up to 86 uh, on display at least as much as possible. Um, all right, uh, good question, good question. Uh, the next question is, let me make sure I'm looking at the right one. Uh, oh, I think I skipped the page, let's see. Oh, I did, sorry, here we go. Um, we're up to Charisma Keith says, um, can you do a segment on Quick Kick? Um, oh, maybe I'll do a segment on Quick Kick, I hadn't thought about it. I'll think about it at least. Um, I did a review of Quick Kick, and I focused a lot on his lack of shoes. Um, that was the theme. <laughs> that was the theme for the video, uh, because it's the thing that stood out to me the most on that figure. Um, but um, I don't know. May maybe that's maybe Quick Kick deserves another look. Tyrell White says, "Of all the GI Joe figures slash vehicles you have uh, left to review, which one are you most looking forward to reviewing?" Uh, there are so many that I am really excited to review, uh, and it's hard to pick one that I'm most excited about. Uh, the Phantom X-19, that'll be a lot of fun to review. The Slaughter's Marauders Equalizer, very excited about that. The Ghost Striker is, I think, a much cooler toy than I was expecting. Uh, excited about that. So there's a lot of them, a lot of them that I'm really looking forward to. Uh, Steve Clower. Uh, says, hello, I recently began uh, this year to acquire my Joes from my childhood. Um, I have them on a shelf in my uh, man cave, similar to yours. Uh, my question is, how often do you clean them and how slash what do you use? Uh, <coughs> well, the answer is not as often as I should. Uh, that's another thing that I just haven't had time to get to. I try to clean things up if they're going to be on camera. Um, but then even at that, like if it's something I'm using for reference, um, I don't usually have time to do a detail job. So, um, uh, so it's probably, it's not as clean as it should be. 
uh, but the thing that I'm actually reviewing, I'm trying to get that cleaned up more. In the past, I didn't bother with it because I guess I didn't think very many people were watching or would care. But uh, nowadays, I do try to clean up whatever item that I'm actually reviewing. Um, but uh, yeah, that's uh, that's a good question. The answer is n not as much as I should. Uh, and what do I use? You know. Uh, soap and water, basically, um, you know, and a soft uh, bristle toothbrush is that should take care of most of it. Uh, in fact, if there's anything that doesn't take care of, you have to be careful about anything abrasive on the plastic. So, um, yeah, I hope that answers your question. Uh, Dave Yardbird says. What are some figures and vehicles that you have changed your mind about, positive or negative, after doing a review? Um, I think even in the reviews, I've said that I changed my mind uh, as I was looking at it. So Pathfinder is a figure I was not expecting to like. I ended up liking it. Um, the <coughs> excuse me, the Demon Tank was a vehicle I was not expecting to like, but. I really enjoyed playing around with it when I was reviewing it. So uh, those are two that come to mind. I do change my mind sometimes. I'm not completely unflexible and contrary to popular opinion. Um, Curtis Schultz says, will you ever do one episode on your Star Wars and Transformers collection and show us how you can play with them with G.I. Joe's? Um, I wouldn't be opposed to it, but I don't really have a lot of Transformers. Uh, I do have some Star Wars, but I haven't like been collecting Star Wars like in earnest. I've got a few of them, um, but if I got more, I mean, I wouldn't be opposed to the idea. Uh, they're just not things that I actively collect. Uh, there are folks that collect uh, all of those things and uh, probably would do a better job of like showing all of those things interacting. Um, but uh, yeah, I'm glad you like Star Wars and Transformers. I like both of those lines too. They're just not lines that I actively collect right now. Um, oh, and he also follows up, where did you get that hoodie? I want one. Uh, if you're talking about the, uh, like the Snake Eyes hoodie, I think I just got that on Amazon. I'm pretty sure. Um, and John Ulrich says, um, are there any figures or vehicles you are not looking forward to reviewing? Um, a lot of 1993, which we got to do it. We got to get through 93, guys. We got to. It's part of the project, but we got to power through that. Um, yeah, the a lot of Ninja Force stuff. I'm really not looking forward to. You know, the stuff that you would expect me to not look forward to. That's the stuff I'm not looking forward to. Um, a big problem with the 93 stuff is not just the volume of it, and not just the colors of everything but it, there's a lot of redundancy i just feel like i'm going to be repeating myself uh in a lot of 1993 reviews and that's not fun it's probably not fun to watch but if i'm going to do the project properly i guess i gotta do it um david uh, Stelz stelzer i almost always say his name wrong david stelzer says um First time caller, long time listener. Uh, Cobra, uh, so Cobra is based in the geographically unknown Springfield, USA. And the Simpson is based in a geographically known, unknown Springfield, USA. My question is, is the criminal snake from the Simpsons affiliated with the Cobra organization in any way? Uh, I'll take my answer off the air. I think he's a dreadnought. That's my theory. <laughs> good question though uh, Joe Motion Videos 82 Byron, a good friend of the channel and a good friend of me uh, does Susan like your collection or just tolerate it um, I think she mostly tolerates it it's easier to tolerate now that it's in here rather than out there with her stuff um, but uh, I mean she doesn't have any special interest in G.I. Joe and I don't ask her to right she enjoys going to the conventions and meeting people and interacting with people and that's fun but um, but as far as the toys and the stuff I don't it's not really her thing so um, you know she, she's okay with it that's that's the best I can say she's okay with it uh, she's not she's not against it 
she doesn't dislike it, but it's uh, it's not something that she probably necessarily loves either. Um, okay, Matthew Todd, oh Matthew Todd Designs says, uh, how old were you when you stopped collecting as a kid? Uh, sorry, in advance, I uh, already answered this before. Well, um, that's fine. Um, I guess I was like 12 or 13 when I stopped, uh, which was actually kind of long in the tooth for a G.I. Joe collector back then. I was kind of getting past the age of collecting toys. Um, and I think technically that was, you know, I was collecting for, uh, for customization purposes by that point. So, um... Yeah, but I guess I would have been around 12 or 13. I can't remember exactly what month I stopped, if it was before or after my 13th birthday, but it, around there, uh, I'm pretty sure. Uh, Moriarty74 says, If you could stop one G.I. Joe figure and one vehicle from being made, which ones would they be? Well, I mean, like, like probably like uh, Cobra Law or Galobulus, if it's one figure, and probably the Pogo. Uh, if it's a vehicle. But here's the thing about that. I mean, I don't like those things, but I understand other people do like them, and I wouldn't want to deny those people the thing that they like. So I wouldn't necessarily stop the production of them. Um, I just wouldn't get them myself. Um, but if you like the things, I want you to have the things that you like. I wouldn't want to do that. Um, Okay, Matt Rubin says, this might be a weird one. Ooh, a weird one. Um, do you prefer us to call you by your real name or HCC788 when we meet you in public? Or do you prefer Hoodie, Hoodie Coco, or any of the other various nicknames you've gotten over the past years? I love it all. You can call me all of the nicknames or HCC or my real name. That's all fine. I just really enjoy meeting people in person. So um, as long as you don't call me late for dinner, uh, we are good. Uh, Alec Tuttle says, um, what are our chances of getting a Dino Hunters review in 2020? Well, I tell you, I don't know what the chances are, but I can tell you that I have had Dino Hunters on my radar. Uh, but I haven't been able to nail down that set yet. Um, it's not an easy one to acquire. This is why that last third of the collection is going to be so difficult, because Dino Hunters is not an easy one. Um, but uh, so will that happen in 2020? I don't know, uh, but it's on my radar. That's, that's all I can say at this point. Uh, Brian uh, Busser um, says... What's your fondest memory of G.I. Joe when you were a kid? Uh, did you play with G.I. Joe with friends, or was it something you did on your own? Um, I did play with friends, and that's probably my fondest memory of G.I. Joe, is playing with friends. Um, I mentioned before my friend Sam. Uh, he would come over to our house, and we would set up everything and have huge battles and huge storylines. We would go to, over to his house and we'd do the same thing. Uh, and we just, there was a lot of, um, uh, just a lot of fun. Just a lot of fun playing with friends uh, with these toys. And uh, yeah, that probably is my favorite G.I. Joe memory. It's just having several really fun years of um, playing with friends. Uh, I, I still have a lot of nice memories of that. Robert Monty says, um, if you'd have a custom G.I. Joe figure made of you, um, would you be part of Cobra, G.I. Joe, or other faction? And how would your figure look? Outfit colors, weapons, specialty, etc. Well, as it happens, uh, some folks have done custom figures of me. I've got a modern version, I've got a vintage version, and then I have a vintage and modern version of like a green Cobra Command hooded Cobra Commander, like uh, O-Ring and modern style. So I like all of those. Um, and I don't know, it's hard for me to like say what a custom figure of me should look like because it, it trips me out that somebody would make a custom figure of me in the first place. So just the effort of doing the figure blows me away. So uh, I'm not going to get too picky about like what parts are used. Uh, I'm just extremely flattered that you would do it in the first place. So for those who have done it, Thank you. It's very, very thoughtful, very flattering. Thank you very much. All right. The Major Pain says, 
Uh, oh, he was watching. He was watching the Toys That Made Us, uh, the documentary on Netflix. Uh, he says, uh, "Questions are, what were your thoughts on it? Um, what is your opinion as to who should get more credit for its creation, Stan Weston or Don Levine? And did Weston get screwed? Uh, I think he did. At least, uh, and at least, I'm sorry. Last but not least, what the hell were they thinking with Cobra Law? Aneurysm, maybe." Uh, and thank you for your nice comments as well. Um, I really enjoyed the toys that made us. I just thought it was fun to see those creators, you know, in this documentary and see them talking about how uh, our GI Joe came about and how the original GI Joe came about. Um, as for who get should get the most credit, that's hard to say because you wouldn't get. G.I. Joe as we know it, or as they knew it back then, without both of them. All right, you have to ha have the guy that has the the kernel of the idea, uh, but then you also have to have the guy the uh, the guy who takes that idea and um, adds the things that makes it the marketable product. Um, I did Stan did Stan Weston get screwed? Probably a bit. Um, I mean, he, he had a chance to have a piece of the pie, as it were, uh, and he declined that. I think that wasn't, in hindsight, that wasn't the best choice. But um, I'm sure at the time he was thinking that, you know, it's probably the best he could do. Um, but I think as G.I. Joe fans, we should show our respect for Stan Weston. I mean, credit to the guy who came up with the idea, who, who actually had the idea first. Um, but having said that, like, would G.I. Joe be G.I. Joe without being called G.I. Joe? Without all of the, like, other decisions that were made leading up to the point to it actually hitting the shelves and being presented to kids? Um, that's, you ask a difficult question. I don't know if I can answer it perfectly well. Uh, but what were they thinking with Cobra Law? You know, that, that was a marketing guy's idea. Marketing. Um, but I, having said that, keep in mind there are some people who really like Cobra Law, and there's nothing wrong with, any, with uh, liking Cobra Law. It's just not my, not my preference. KB uh, asks the question, he says, um, well, he says, I know you had a modest Star Wars collection back in your early years uh, when you did a few reviews on them. How big is the collection now, and do you plan on collecting more or all of them, regardless of ever intending to review them? Hey, good question. Good question. Um, the Star Wars collection, I've added a few pieces here and there. Like, I have an X-Wing. Uh, I have a speeder bike. Uh, I have, a, like, a, a Boba Fett. I have a few things. But I'm not actively collecting it, so the that collection is not really growing. Um, I'm really focused. I'd really like to finish this G.I. Joe project. Um, so after I'm done with that, then I might turn my attention to Star Wars, maybe. Um, the prices on vintage Star Wars is getting ridiculous, so maybe not. But uh, I'm really focused right now on getting this G.I. Joe project done. Um, Shane Everett says, uh, what's your favorite year for G.I. Joe vehicles? Mine is 1988. Well, you know what? Mine might be 1988 too, which may be surprising for a lot of people because like Killer Whale was 1984. And there were some good year vehicles in 1984, including the Rattler. Um, but there were also some weak additions in 1984. Uh, 1982 had some great vehicles, but you know, kind of short on aircraft, you know, water vehicles, you know, uh, 1982 is kind of one-sided. 1983, you have the His Tank, you have the um, uh, Sky Striker, fantastic vehicles, fantastic vehicles. But again, you also have some weaker entries in 1983. But um, when you look at 1988, and look at these that were introduced in 1988. You had the, the Warthog, the Mean Dog, Rolling Thunder, the Phantom X-19, the Desert Fox, 
the Cobra Bug. Um, you had some weaker additions too. You had like the Battle Barge and the Adder, the RPV. But 1988 actually had a lot of military themed vehicles. Uh, way more than you would expect for that uh, time period. And, you know, if you're just looking at the year as a whole, that might actually be the best one. All right, Anthony Rodriguez has, uh, looks like, four questions. Uh, question one, uh, I know you don't consider Street Fighter line a uh, subset part of G.I. Joe canon, but they are official. Uh, do you have any of those figures? Um, and as far as canon goes, there isn't a single G.I. Joe canon, so canon really isn't probably the right word. Um, I don't, I know they have the G.I. Joe label on them, but I never really consider them, they're not really integrated into the G.I. Joe toy line. They're really kind of their own separate thing with the G.I. Joe label and reusing a lot of G.I. Joe parts. Um, but do I have any? I, I don't have any. Uh, that's not something that I actively collect, and actually I don't think anyone has sent me any either. Um, and let's see, oh yeah, they go uh, well with Mortal Kombat and, and so on. Yeah, I mean, I'm sure they do. And I'm, for Street Fighter fans, I'm sure the figures are fine. Um, question two is, did you ever get into the modern versions of the Joe figures that came out in the 2010s to 2017s? Uh, I have some, but I don't actively collect them. I think they look really nice and they have a lot of nice accessories. Uh, but uh, I am focused on the vintage, so I don't actively collect modern. Uh, I've had some modern figures donated to the channel, which has been very, very helpful and I appreciate, but just not something that I actively collect. Uh, have you ever seen the G.I. Joe Creo line? Uh, and he describes that. I have seen it. Again, not something that I collect. Um, interesting idea. I know Lego is popular. Uh, I don't think the Creo line... Um, uh, well, it's not still around. I guess it, it didn't uh, didn't last all, all that long. But uh, but I know some people who really liked it and uh, who still collect it. So uh, I think it's not a bad idea. It's just, again, it's not vintage, so it's not my focus. Um, and I, finally, he asks about the built to rule line. And I, again, I have seen the built to rule line. Now that is an intriguing idea. Um, that's something that I never would have thought of to do like a. G.I. Joe and like building pieces. Um, interesting idea. Apparently it didn't resonate. I guess it wasn't very popular. Um, I don't know how I would have felt about it if I had gotten it, but um, you know, again, it's not my focus, so I don't intend to collect them. But, but an intriguing idea, I'll, I will say. Uh, that, that's, um, it's innovative. I'll give you that. Um, Jerry Reiner says, um, fan creation seem to be about the only way to bring Joes into the future. Uh, is there any known self-regulation effort in the community <clears throat> to help Joers uh, protect Joers from counterfeit or reproduction or very good customization work compared to original G.I. Joe products and the G.I. Joe branded products? Um, I make my own accessories and play sets. If they ever escaped into the wild, I would hate for their uh, providence to be unknown and they get passed off as originals when they aren't. Uh, thank you for your great work uh, and thank you for writing. Really good question. Uh, there is a lot of controversy surrounding reproduction figures and accessories. Um, I, When I first started out, I really didn't have a problem with them. I, uh, uh, over time, I've kind of changed my mind about them. I looking at what they do, or I should say what they have done in other uh, collecting circles, uh, I think in general it, it um, it's, doesn't help, you know, the collecting community very much. It's, I think it introduces a lot of confusion um, into the collecting market. Um, I do not think they bring down the prices of the actual vintage items. Um, I, I've seen no evidence of that, uh, but what they do is they introduce um, uncertainty, um, and that sometimes can even drive prices up. Um, so, 
Uh, yeah, I, I'm not a fan of the, the counterfeits or reproductions. Um, there are some customizations, though, that, I mean, you know they're not vintage, and nobody's going to mistake them for vintage. Um, and some amazing customization work is done by very creative people. Um, and not only is there not anything wrong with that, I think that's a great thing. Um, but there are some uh, uh, reputable toy dealers who uh, are very careful to not include reproduction pieces. I think uh, Roma Collectibles is the first one to come to mind. That uh, they, I mean, they've stated publicly that they don't like and they don't want reproduction. Uh, they're trying to stick with the, the real items. So, um, you know, I don't want to stoke that controversy too much other than to state that um, I, I, I would not like to see more high quality reproduction uh, items hit the market. I think they will ultimately be bad for um, the, just the activity of collecting vintage toys. Uh, I think they will, they will hurt far more than they could possibly help. Uh, and they are counterfeits. I mean, that's what they are. I mean, you can use whatever terminology you want, but when you boil it right down, if they are creating something that is intended to look very close to the original vintage item, that's a counterfeit. Um, but as far as um, self-regulation, you know, in a lot of ways it's the Wild West out there, so you just have to be cautious. Um, and good luck. Um, and, but if I can help, you know, sometimes if you ask for help, I, most of the times I can spot the uh, reproduction or counterfeit items. And some of them are really good and some of them will slip by me. Uh, sometimes you really have to find an expert to tell you if something is real or not. Uh, KB, we got KB again. Um, uh, an aside. Um, uh, seen one great fan creation and one abomination. Um, oh, Revenge of Cobra. Oh, the robot from Re Revenge of Cobra. And then the Cobra Commander figure transformed into reptilian f form from the movie. Um, this goes right at what I just said about... Uh, about uh, customization, and uh, um, I think all of that is great, uh, and it doesn't bother me to like see a customization of, you know, a figure from the '87 movie uh, because I can appreciate the creativity and the work that goes into it. So uh, that stuff is awesome. Yeah, I, I've seen that stuff too, and my hats off to the creative people who actually put the effort and the time into creating those things. Creating things that never existed, right? Hasbro never gave us those things. But, you know, they showed those things on the screen, but they never actually gave them to you in a tangible form. So that's kind of cool. That's kind of cool. Uh, Agnetha Leduff says, my question, uh, if, if, is there a smaller gun for Baroness and Saw Viper that resembles the same looking gun as the one in the artwork for their card. I'm not aware of one. Um, there are so many accessories that came out in the 90s that there may be like an adequate substitute for it, but it's not coming to mind. I can't think of one right off the top of my head. I'm, I'm sorry. I, I wish there were one, but um, yeah, they did get kind of oversized weapons. It's, yeah, that's, yeah, uh, I understand your frustration. Brent McMillan, hello Brent, uh, says, uh, for many of us kids from in the 80s and 90s, seeing new Joes on the toy shelves would obviously bring back, uh, bring a great deal of excitement and joy. Have any pickups in 2019 brought back any of these kid-like flutters of excitement and pure joy? Um, well, yeah. Um, and it's usually surrounding stuff that I didn't have as a kid. Like, let me see if I can carefully pull this off the shelf here. I got this thing and it's like this Night Force Killer Whale. I know that's not what it's called, but it it's the Killer Whale in Night Force colors. And I ne of course I never had this as a kid and it's not complete. It, it has some of the pieces in there though. Um, but uh, I just love seeing this and being able to hold this in my hand. And one reason that I was 
thrilled to get it is because I had um, I'd had to pick up a bunch of stuff that I wasn't very thrilled with because I needed to fill some gaps in the collection. I needed to get some stuff ready to review. And I was like, I just really want to get something that I like, something that I will actually enjoy. And yeah, that thing, I, I, was, I was pretty happy to get it. I, I had fun playing around with it and kind of like, just having that, that black killer whale, which killer whale is my favorite vehicle anyway, but it's just a really cool, uh, variation of, of that uh, classic vehicle. So there's one right there. Yeah, I got a, a great thrill out of that. Um, Peter Ang says, uh, non-G.I. Joe characters from the cartoon overlooked in the... Uh, oh, are non-G.I. Joe characters from the cartoon overlooked in the comic book uh, characters? And what non-Joe character from the cartoon would you love to see in the comics? Uh, that's a tough question. So I, by non-G.I. Joe characters, I assume uh, you mean like not like Sparks. Sparks was a G.I. Joe, but they never made a figure out of him. And he was not in the comic book. Um, and the characters I am thinking... I, I can think of right offhand are like side characters from the cartoon that didn't get into the comic book like like Honda Lou. I assume you're not meaning like side characters like Honda Lou. Um, so I, 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 that's all I can think of right now because I'm not sure exactly if I'm answering your question right. So I apologize for that. I, I, I don't think I'm answering your question properly. But I guess I'll have to move on because I'm not sure, I, uh, right off the top of my head, which like cartoon characters that you would want to see in the comic book. Maybe I should just ask you the question. Were there um, characters in the cartoon that you wanted to see in the comic book but you didn't see? Um, maybe you can let me know and then maybe I can think about it a little bit more. Um, but Peter Ang, I'm always happy to see you, uh, and nice to see you in the live uh, live stream as well. Um, LO1BO2 says, uh, Hi Brian, hopefully you won't skip this very important question. Does Snake Eyes wear boxers, briefs, or does he go commando? <laughs> there's a reason he's called commando. Yeah, it, I just don't think there's any question about that. Although only Scarlet knows for sure. But um, but I, I, I think he's commando in more ways than one. Um, Erdio21 says, uh, it may seem strange, uh, but it's been on my mind for decades, literally decades. Virtually all the box art features vehicles driving or flying from the right, or, I'm sorry, toward the right. Uh, the only ones I can think of otherwise are the Fang and Serpentor's Air Chariot. Uh, this must be for marketing appeal or purposes, um, I guess, but do you have any thoughts on why the vehicles are heading um, to the right on the box art? There's no way it's a coincidence. Um, there must be a reason, and I, I, mean, I think there is a reason, and I think, uh, let's see, um, somebody responded to this question indicating that, you know, you, you read from left to right, so they're probably thinking of the, the eye flow across the artwork on the box. So yeah, it's probably a marketing thing and it's probably related to just how the eye flows over the artwork. Um, but even if that's the case, then the question is, why was it ever different? Why was the Fang different? Why was Serpentor's Air Chariot different? Why did they, on those very few select items, why did they go the other direction? That, uh, to me, that's, the mystery. If you're going to do it one way on virtually every other example, why do you do it the other way on that one? Why is that? Hmm? Riddle me that. Uh, good question, though. Thank you for asking. Brad Williams, uh, would you consider getting your hands on slash reviewing the mass device that came out with the DVD battle packs in the early 2000s? Well, um, I don't think I would do like a full review on it. I could do like a like a, a, a quick look at it. Uh, it's, it is outside the scope of, you know, what I'm reviewing on the channel. It's out the, outside the scope of the 
the project. But, you know, if I got it, uh, I would at least look at it, you know, I'd, I'd probably at least get it in front of the camera. Um, but other than that, I, I don't know. Um, uh, I mean, I've seen them around, and I know people like them, and it is kind of cool to have something that, you know, appeared in the the animated series, but we didn't get a toy of it, you know, in the, in the vintage line. Um, Jay uh, Arbello says, question one, uh, why is Stalker 1982 so much money? Uh, and question two, why didn't Hasbro make the G.I. Joe vehicle from G.I. Joe comic number six, the six-wheeler with the, uh, the crap? Um, Stalker is expensive because it's another one of those figures that breaks very easily, so uh, it's hard to find intact examples at a reasonable price. Plus, I think the 1982 figures just in general are starting to get more expensive. I, not just Stalker, but a lot of them are getting more expensive. Um, but yeah, Stalker, that light green plastic breaks very easily. So, you know, a lot of them just didn't survive. Um, as for the vehicle in the comic book, um, it's probably the same as a lot of the vehicles in the animated series that did not become toys. Um, it was a one-time use, uh, but a really cool design. I thought it was a cool design. Um, it would have been really big. Think about how big that would have been. That would have been a very large vehicle. Um, and it might have been a cool vehicle to have. I know that somebody's done one. Somebody's made one. Because at uh, JoeCon, somebody had a custom of that vehicle, and it was really awesome. Um, but yeah, it was just a one-time thing, I think, just created for that issue of the comic book. Um, but I thought it was a cool design. Uh, Seek the Day says, if you had to slim down your collection to five figures and one vehicle, what would they be? Here's would be Breaker, because he's my first figure. Stalker, because he's my favorite figure. Um, Hooded Cobra Commander, because that's where this channel's name comes from. Uh, Snake Eyes uh, and Storm Shadow, because yin and yang. Uh, and the Killer Whale, because it's my favorite vehicle. David Landon Cole, okay, David Landon Cole answers... Uh, answers this question for me. He says, five ice creams and an orange hiss tank. <laughs> now that, that's, that's Timmer's list. That's not my list. Uh, Max Blue says, uh, do you have a list of items online for missing figures slash accessories slash vehicles? Uh, do you consider 1993 Street Fighter Joe part of your, your project? Um, when are you going to show off the AC-130 gunship sitting on the USS flag? Um, it's a, right over there, and if it weren't so big, I would go get it and put it on screen right now. Uh, I do want to show that thing on screen at some point. I just haven't found the time to do it. It's a really cool toy. Um, as uh, Answering your questions in reverse uh, about Street Fighter, I don't consider them to be part of the project, but I will be covering them with some help pretty soon. Um, and, um, and a list of items missing... Um, I don't have a list. I know I need to get a list. I don't have a list. You know, I did have a list, but it just, I couldn't keep up with it. I, I was getting stuff so fast, and then I'd go to, like, JoeCon and just pick up a whole bunch of stuff, and then I just never, like, went back and updated the list. It just became too much. Um, I know it would be helpful to have a list. Eventually, I'll have a list. Right now, the list is up here. It's in my head, and that's not a very good place for it. Uh, Glenn Robbins says, uh, do you plan on doing a review of Stalker version 5? That's the 1994 Stalker. Yes, I will do a review. I don't know exactly when, but I will get to it. I will do a review of that figure. Photo Viper says, excluding Zarktan, which is your favorite Dreadnought? Buzzer. Always been Buzzer. Always been partial to Buzzer. I like Buzzer. Uh, Zed Kaizoku says, um, knowing you will only review Vintage Joe's 82 to 90, actually 94, uh, my questions are, one, will you review somebody, I'm sorry, re review some of the G.I. Joe spy troops, Valor vs. Venom toys, since they uh, also have O-ring figures, especially the Arctic Ice Saber with Frostbite, uh, which uh, love to know your opinion on this particular vehicle design. Uh, no plans to do that right now. Um, 
the project kind of ends at 1994 because this line ended at 1994. It's like a, a historical backstop to this project. Um, so it doesn't cover all of O-Ring's uh, O-Ring figures and their accompanying vehicles. Uh, I wouldn't be opposed to looking at it, but no plans at least right now. Question two, since Captain Gridiron is a captain, do you think uh, Duke or Stalker should remain sergeant or become captains too? Well, I think in G.I. Joe Retaliation, didn't Duke become a captain? I thought that was true. Um, but in my universe, um, Duke and Stalker are both sergeants. They're, they're both non-commissioned officers. I just... I just don't see them becoming officers. Um, I just think they embody that, you know, non-com uh, personality, that mentality, uh, and I just think that they would. That that's what they would do. I don't think they would uh, accept a commission. Uh, question three is: uh, What are your five, top five favorite Joe's uh, Joe vehicles and five Cobra vehicles from any year? Uh, for this, uh, a a while back, I did a top 10 uh, video for vehicles, and I, I've found a lot of vehicles since then that I like a lot, but I, I will just refer to that video because I don't think that list has changed. I still, I think those are still my favorites. I, th I think so. Even though I, again, I've found a lot of really great stuff since then, uh, I, I think my top 10 is still unchanged. Uh, Cobra Island says, uh, would you ever promote any other channel uh, on your videos? Uh, I like the concept because I many people want other opinions on figures vehicles. I, I promote others like yours and Kevin's mostly. Uh, so that would what? So would that be an opinion, uh, an option for you? I try to promote people's channels a lot. Um, I have people on the show a lot. I refer people to others' videos a lot. I kind of thought that's what I was doing. I'm not sure what. I would need to do to, how, how, I'm not sure how I can do more of that. I, I do Cobra Convergence where a lot of people come together and do their thing. And I direct people to a lot of different people. And even like, like uh, channels that are not like the featured channels that are on the schedule, um, I, I, I open it up to everyone who has a, a YouTube channel or is a content creator that does anything related to G.I. Joe, I try to bring them in. I also try to tell everybody who they are. I do promotion videos. I do like whole videos that show what they do. So I hope that I'm already doing that. I don't know what else I should do. Um, WWJD85 says, do you think G.I. Joe's 90s figures could uh, could be done without the oversaturation of missile launchers that came with the figures. Uh, well, yeah, I mean, the missile launchers, for the most part, uh, are, well, it's just not my thing. I, I've grown to tolerate them. I don't dislike them as much as I used to, but I mean, I just don't need them. I, I, I don't need spring-loaded missile launchers. It's just not my thing. Um, I think a lot of 90s figures would benefit from repaints uh, because some of the sculpting on 90s figures is excellent, really great, but they put colors on them that distract from that great sculpting so that you don't, sometimes you don't even see it. Um, if you have 90s figures, I would encourage you to look closely at them and look at all of the intricate sculpting work on those figures. And then take a step back and look at the figure and see how much of that great sculpting work is washed out by the color choices. Um, but yeah, that's my thoughts about it. Uh, Renegade Biker, uh, will you be able to get LED strip lights for your collection? Uh, ever used molding putty um, uh, on your collection that is missing a part or connection? Uh, plan, oh, he plans to do that with the Havoc. Um, the, the part that goes on the side panel. Okay, yeah, I understand what you're talking about. Or the Skyhawks um, or Fang's landing skid. I actually did use um, like um, like plumbers, uh, the two-part plumbers epoxy uh, to repair a uh, a hinge on the tactical battle platform, 
and it was a gray piece because it's that like the ramp and the the epoxy was also gray so it blended in perfectly it's like did the perfect repair job it's the best repair job i've ever done um so i have used it in that uh capacity i don't use it very much as much as possible i try to get uh unbroken pieces uh, but I have had to do repairs every once in a while. Uh, not with putty as much, but, you know, it's just a fact of life, I think, with if you're collecting vintage toys, is sometimes you, you have to fix them. Um, and uh, Toy Poloi, a great channel to get some good ideas for how to do repairs on uh, vintage figures and vehicles. Oh, and uh, the LED strip lights, I would like to, uh, I'd love to have those. I, I think all this stuff could be lit better. Uh, but it's just, it's just not a high priority right now because huh, when I look at my schedule, there is so much that I have to do in a relative short period of time that, uh, like other things, like cleaning my stuff and like organizing my stuff and like creating a list of my stuff, it just it's gonna have to wait until I have more time to do it, which I hope I hope someday in the near future I will have. Uh, and we're getting close to the end. Oh my gosh, is this the last page of questions? This is we're on the last page of questions. Uh, DVD bytes uh, has some questions. He says, when did you get back into G.I. Joe? Somewhere around 2014. What caused you to get back into it? Um, I was not feeling very good, uh, but I found Form BX257. I loved his videos and I got back into it. Um, what was the first figure you got after getting back into G.I. Joe? I got 1982 Straight Arm Breaker because that was the first figure I ever got as a child. Uh, what do you think of both movies and post-Marvel comics series? Uh, the movies, um, I wasn't a big fan of Rise of Cobra. Uh, I liked Retaliation better. It was not perfect, but it, it was an improvement. It felt a bit more like G.I. Joe than the first movie. Um, as far as the uh, post-Marvel series, um, I haven't been super interested in the stuff that wasn't written by Larry Hama. You know, there are some creative ideas there, but they're just not to my taste. I know a lot of other people like them, but it's just, it hasn't been my thing. Um, as far as uh, the Larry Hama series that he's doing with IDW, I've only recently gotten back into reading that, and I, I think it's great. I think Larry is doing a great job. I regret missing out on that series for all these years. The series has been going for years, and I could have been reading it the whole time, but I'm stuck in my vintage ways, and I want my Marvel comics, and I just hadn't given the series a chance. Well, I wish I had given it a chance a lot sooner. Um, oh, uh, let's see. We're not done with questions here. He says... Um, when you reach the end of the classic G.I. Joe, uh, what will you do then? I don't know. <laughs> and uh, finally, uh, le the le uh, least favorite figure ever. Uh, that's still got to be Golobulus. That tail, man, that tail. Um, Gaz says, if you could choose any vehicle outside G.I. Joe to become a Joe or Cobra vehicle, what would you choose? Example, the sea view from uh, Voyage from Beyond the Sea. The Joes could use a kick-ass sub like that. Um, yeah, I think I mentioned the Hind helicopter before. Um, the C-130. I'll stick with that. Both the Hind helicopter and the C-130. Uh, I think we got non-G.I. Joe versions of both of those. But I would love to have seen either of those back uh, in the vintage era. I, uh, those would have been really cool. Um, uh, G.I. Do Dojo says, what's your favorite G.I. Joe at retail memory? For instance, maybe uh, the grandest display aisle or maybe the best find during your childhood. Um, uh, I, there are so many. I have to pick one. Um, I think... I think the time that I guilted my parents into getting the Wolverine and CoverGirl, uh, yeah, I actually, we were in, where were we? I think we were in, 
I forget what store we were in. Now, now I'm blanking on what store it was. I remember this play. I, I can see it like it was yesterday. I just don't remember what store it was. But I told my parent, actually said to my dad, hey, it's been quite a while since you got us a, a G.I. Joe vehicle. Uh, man, I miss getting G.I. Joe vehicles. Are we ever going to get a G.I. Joe vehicle again? And I basically nagged until I got to pick one out. And uh, I think the Wolverine was the one that I didn't have. So I got that one. And I, I like the Wolverine. I like, I like the toy. But yeah, that's, uh, that's the one that stands out of my memory right now, is when I guilted my parents into getting the 1983 Wolverine. Um, Gabe Kane says, will you be remaking your 1983 headquarters review? Uh, I think that one is probably more likely to be redone. I feel like I can do better on that one. That's a really old review. Um, so uh, the answer is maybe. I don't know if I will get to it, but I would definitely like to redo that one. Uh, and the last question, which is actually the first question to be asked, is from Chris Mc83. Uh, is what is your all-time favorite G.I. Joe figure? And that is Stalker. Um, I guess technically Stalker version 1.5 because I like the swivel arms, but Stalker, either version 1 or version 1.5. That will always be my favorite. And that is it. That is the much too long Q&A video, and uh, congratulations to anyone who actually makes it through the video. Uh, my voice is hoarse now. Uh, I didn't take enough breaks, so probably... I'll break it up a little bit more next time. Uh, and But it's been fun, so I guess we'll keep the tradition alive. Thank you to everyone who participated. And this is it. This is the end of 2019. Uh, 2020 will be a big year, I think. It's uh, There are a lot of great things planned. I hope you enjoy it. I hope you, I get to meet a lot of you in person. That was one of the great things about 2019, is I got to meet a lot of you guys. Uh, and that was... Uh, so much fun and that means a lot to me so uh, thank you to everyone who participated I'm gonna wrap this up now thanks for making 2019 great uh, I will see you next year and until then remember only GI Joe is GI Joe